Hello everybody and welcome back to PGG. I play four new games from the Game Pass every month and eliminate one each week until we have the winner, my personally recommended game of the month. Keep in mind, these are only my opinions. Last week I eliminated the first of the four games, Streets of Rage 4, West of Dead, Level Head, and Valorant. And spoiler alert, if you haven't seen that episode, I recommend you go watch it before you see this. This week is the last elimination week of this month. Today I'll be digging deeper into each of the games, talking mainly about the challenge spike, which is a very interesting subject. When you play the first level of Streets of Rage 4, The Streets, you'll notice it isn't that hard. It starts you off real nicely by not giving you a huge challenge when you first begin the game. Of course it gets harder as you go through each level, but not by a massive amount. Here's a simple graph that I made that depicts the challenge spike of the game. As you can see, the challenge of the first level isn't very high. Steadily, the challenge increases throughout the game. They also didn't really waste any time teaching you on how to play the game since it's very simple. Another thing, if I and my brother are stuck in a level, I've got to admit, it gets really boring sometimes. We'll have to grind the same level over and over again. Sometimes it makes the game hard to pick up again. And for West of Dead, the challenge of this game stands out. When you first start playing, you don't have much health, so being patient and strategic is pretty much the only way you're getting past the first level. But of course, you have the option to get more health over weapon damage and ability cooldown reduction. But, but you have to keep in mind that the enemies are getting stronger every level, so it's a constant battle against balancing health and weapon damage. Now, take a look at this graph. As you can see, the challenge spike is already high from the start. The challenge only goes up every level. Once you finish the first level, the crypts, you're greeted by an even harder level, the hunt. This is a very different game, so I can't blame it for being different. Something else I like is how the levels are procedurally generated, which means that every level is randomized each time you play it. They still have the same color scheme, but corridors, enemies, and rooms are in different places. I like it because unlike Valorant and Streets of Rage 4, this keeps the game new, in a way. As for Valorant, take a look at this graph. The challenge spike isn't very high for the game modes Unrated and Spike Rush. As you move up through the ranks, the challenge spike increases, especially when you reach gold rank. I think it's a nice idea, especially because you can choose the game mode you want to play. If you want to practice an agent, change sensitivity, or something else, you can play some spike rush or unrated matches, giving you the freedom to choose the difficulty of the game you play. It's elimination time. I've talked specifically about the challenge spike for each game. Now, it's time to eliminate one of the games. The game that'll be eliminated is... Streets of Rage 4. Streets of Rage is a beautiful game. The animation is great, the character design is great, and so much more. Now why would I eliminate it? Here are the reasons. It might be visually amazing, but it grinds you down at a point. I'll explain. As I move forward in the game, the levels become harder. As they get harder, I'll lose and need to redo a level more often. As this gets more frequent, I get tired of playing the same level over and over again. Besides that, I'm fighting the same guys. They do introduce more enemies as the game progresses, but in a real sense, I'm just fighting this guy over and over and over again. The story isn't very strong. It's there, but it's just not very strong. As I said with Level Head last week, this game just lacks a story to keep me coming back. Next week will be the grand finale, so make sure you're watching to find out which of these games will continue on to compete for my personally recommended game of the month. I'll post the next video Sunday, 12pm Central Standard Time. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and remember, life is short. Play great games.